Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're going to take a look at four different boards that are actually quite similar. Now I get a lot of questions on our budget keeps and I do my best to answer as many of them as I can. Um, obviously I've been sick lately so I've kind of been slipping on that. But one of the most common questions I've been receiving lately is a combination or a derivation of something similar to which is better out of these usually they'll name two maybe three um, we've got the Akko 5075 this was the bare bone edition so it doesn't have a B or an S I don't believe at the end of it um, this was a $60 board bare bone this is the Keyduis NJ80 it is not the Epo Maker TH80 now they probably use the same hardware but Epo Maker has Flash new firmware and I can't speak to it I do have one but I haven't had a chance to test it out yet and compare but then we have the Fecker IK75 now this is the Pro this is not the V3 V3 is a newer edition that has some changes with the knob um, and with the gasket structures and there also is a Pro QMK via version but I haven't even seen QMK files so I don't know how much I trust that and then over here we have the James Donkey A3, uh, which is a 75% that was recently uh, released. And I believe Keep Monkey is carrying it as well as uh, Drop has pre orders for it. Uh, but from Keep Monkey, I believe that's $72. Now the NJ80, unfortunately, I can't seem to find it for anything less than 90 bare bone. And then starting at 115 and going up with uh, switches and keycaps. Now, People try to people ask me which one is better. Well, it, I can't say which one is better. They're all built differently, um, and I honestly I, I can't. You know, some people are like, which one should I buy? I'm like, well, I don't know you. I know what I would buy, but I don't know you. So out of all of these, I want to just compare real quick the different features that we have. Now, obviously, this right here, this is the only wired one that we have, so we don't have a battery size in it. Um, it does come with two complementary knobs and it does have side lighting that kind of, I mean, it's a, it makes it a, a clone-ish, more clone-ish of the GMMK Pro. Um, we have the columns on the side with the four navigation. As you can see, other ones have three, uh, but the IK75 has four as well. Now, uh, it's not necessarily what you call a hefty board. It's kind of light. Um, and though I did test the pre-built ones and I was not happy at all. They came with Akko switches and Akko caps. It did not sound good. Um, I'm using Akko switches in here, but some uh, Samurai clones. And it sounds much better. I haven't gone in and tuned it yet, but I have watched videos and it doesn't look to be very friendly in as far as going in there and doing some mods because of uh, particularly how the um, the light diffuser is uh, is built in. So this one right here, I've had trouble with Hako boards, but if you're gonna get go with the one of the 75 percents, now I know. I believe they have the version two or version three of the PCB 75 coming out at some point. Uh, um, I, I can't speak to it. I know I've had trouble with the mod series boards and for right now, I'm just gonna back off of Akko boards for a little bit because they're releasing way too many of them and I keep reading some pretty bad horror stories. I myself have had one going through uh, customer support, but others others as well. And it seems to be not only QA, QC, but also customer support. So, but if you're gonna have, if you really, really want one, um, they do have this one for $60 in three different colors, I believe, black, blue, and pink, if I'm not mistaken, on their website. It's hidden for some reason, but if you just search for bare bone or 5075, it'll come up. But so, out of these four boards, we kind of, this one kind of just doesn't fit, but I just wanted to bring it up because it's not, it doesn't have any wireless capabilities. So I'm just going to put this one aside for right now. All right. Next up we have, let's go ahead and talk about this one, IK75. Now, 
this board, I, I'd originally, one of the first ones I bought in this, well, I was sent to, a friend of mine sent me a GMMK, or, yeah, GMMK Pro uh, that he had bought and just never used. And he's like, oh, you're into mechanicals here? Take this one. So I did have that one, but it took me a while to get to it to build it. But the first one that I had bought of the plastic series or, or of the, the clone, um, 75%, if you will, was the Kiduos NJ80. Now, I actually received one that was meant for e-waste. had a whole column that didn't work. Um, it was, thankfully though, long story short, uh, the seller reached out to me, um, apologized, gave me a discount. I purchased it and I've been happy with this board. I've used it as a daily driver uh, quite a few times. It's, a, it's just a, it's a nice board. Now, one of the things though, that might turn some people off to this. Oh no, no, this one is south facing, Never mind. Um, so it's south facing and it has a 4,000, I'm gonna say this is a, either 3,800 or 4,000 milliamp hour battery, um, you know, which isn't that bad. Um, it's, but if you're using RGB, it, you know, it's going to use up some of that battery. Uh, as far as battery, this this one is definitely, uh, IK75 is definitely the winner. It comes with two 4,000 milliamp hour batteries for a total of 8,000 milliamp hours. I don't know how long it's going to last, but that's going to last a while. But anyway, I after having bought the NJ80 and going through all of that, I mean, thankfully I ended up with a good kit. A lot of people were like, hey, how about the Fecker IK75? And I'm like, ah, I don't know. And I had it in my cart for a while until a really good sale came up. And I was like, screw it, let me go ahead and get it, even though it is a uh, uh, kind of like a translucent, um, opaque white, which isn't usually my cup of tea. Like, I mean, someday I probably will spray paint this because it's just meh. It, I mean, even if, if it was solid white, um, or beige. If this was beige, it'd be beautiful. It'd be perfect. But I have also used this board as a daily driver. It's very well built. And this was the first budget board that I purchased that actually came with two plates. It came with built in with the steel plate and it came with a PC plate. So I immediately took it out, put the PC plate in, and I've been very happy with it. Now this one I have modded and tuned. Um, it has been a while, I could probably do a little bit more to it now, but I've enjoyed this board thoroughly. I think this is a great board. Um, it definitely wins when it comes to the uh, battery uh, department. It also has a spot to store your dongle. Now, nowadays, I just don't understand why any keyboard that has a 2.4 doesn't have some way to store a dongle, uh, because if you leave it in the box or it's just loose, it's gonna get lost. So IK75 probably sits closer to the top for me, um, being that it comes with that extra plate and being that it comes with so much battery power, I don't use wireless hardly at all. But if I'm going to, I'd like to have as much power available to me as possible. So, but the NJ80, now this one is a north facing. So for some people, this, this is going to be, no, this is south. This is north facing, that's what, my bad. The IK75, that's probably one of the only things that, you fo that folks are gonna be a little unhappy about is that it's north facing. But as you can see, I have cherry keycaps on here and aqua greens, and I have no interference to speak of. But that's because of the switch. Um, there's gonna, the north facing interference is a thing that is slowly but surely going away. So um, if you want, your caps to do shine through, you want north facing LEDs. Just gotta say so, but for a lot of people, that'll turn turn them off, that, that it's north facing, but let that be that. So, like I said, the NJ80 or the TH80, but again, the TH80 is the same hardware, but it's using different firmware. I, I really don't know what Epo Maker has done, but I have heard of instances where, you know, they the firmware is literally just killed the board. Um, and then dealing with customer support with Epo is hell, the seventh circle of hell. So anyway, I would definitely, if you can find this from a reputable vendor, say on Amazon or another trusted vendor that you, you know, um, I would probably go with them. And you know, it's a, 
it's a great kit for what it is. I mean, I again, this one, I want to say it's 3,800 milliamp hour battery, uh, but I, again, I don't use it wireless very often. The only thing that I would say, it only has one pair of legs. So you're only going to get two typing angles where out of all these other ones, you notice we're going to have two, two pairs. So we're going to have two or three total typing angles, which I mean, most situations, I mean, the way that I'm, I'm set up, it really doesn't matter. But to some people, obviously it's important, you know, so that you're, you're ergonomically correct and not stressing out your, uh, you know, creating tendinitis or any of those, you know, conditions for holding your hands incorrectly. So now this one, it is newer and I haven't had as much of time to play with it. This was one of the better sounding ones out of the box. It is a little bit muted. Um, it reminds me a lot of say a gas 67, how it sounds stock, uh, but it's, it's still quite nice. This one does have 3000 milliamp hour batteries. So this is the smaller out of all of them. Um, it does have three instead of uh, four uh, buttons for the navigation column on the right. It does have a, a knob that you can replace. And this is, yeah, that's a metal knob. So, and it uses the regular standard D potentiator meter knob. So you're just gonna wanna make sure that you have clearance so that you can still press down. Now this board, does actually have visible flex. I mean, look at pressing down on the buttons, on the um, knob and you can see there is definitely some flex. There's definitely some flex when you type. So, but unfortunately I haven't had the chance to play with this one that much. One of my complaints though, is that I have to keep the, uh, the dongle in the box because there's no spot for it. I mean, I've opened this up already and I do know that there is space in there. They could have easily just put a little spot with a magnet where you could pop it in. Why they chose not to do that is beyond me. But the construction of this one is actually quite well made. It's almost built like a um, like it's an aluminum kit that was just cast in plastic. Um, but because it's got nice clean lines, I do like the dual tone. The, 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 the two-tone on it. Uh, not that the orange is not my favorite color, but I think it just, it looks nice. Um, it works, for me, it works with the Carbon Retro that I picked on it, although it looks kind of red on camera. But to say which one out of these th three, or if you want to include the Akko four, is the best, I, I can't say which one's the best for an individual person. I can say for myself, that I've enjoyed the Fecker IK75. And if these three were put in front of me, it honestly would be a hard pick between this and this. Now there's a reason why this one actually kind of gives me a little bit more want to buy it is because of this simple thing that you won't find in any of these other keyboards. Ah, come on. We have screw in stabilizers. Now for a $70 um, budget kit uh, to have screwing PCB uh, stabilizers, that's actually pretty good. I, I, I mean, all of these are, are plate mounted. So, you know, you're dealing with stock or you have to find some that are gonna fit that particular plate, 1.2, 1.6, whatever the width of the actual uh, plate might be. So having screw in stabilizers is a nice thing. Uh, the software on this is a little wonky. Uh, I do run Linux, so I primarily just stick to using the um, uh, the shortcut keys, and I have I have all the keys that I that I need. They're already there. So um, that'd be the only reason that I'd kind of consider this one over the IK75. But the IK75, like I said, not only is there a newer one, which they they did do better with the gaskets, from what I can see. I haven't had one in hand, um, but it's the V3, and there's also the V3 uh, QMK version. Again, I have not seen QMK files for it. It would be nice. Um, that would definitely in intrigue me or interest me into buying it, but what I've seen on the prices are up to about $175. It's like, hmm. And you, use, you, you lose wireless. If you do get the QMK version, you're not gonna have wireless anymore. So I just wanted to make 
a little quick video, quick comparisons and just my thoughts amongst these. Um, like I said, I probably, I mean, if all things were the same, I probably would get the IK75, but this one would definitely be second in my running. Not that I don't love the, the, the key duos, but it's just, I don't know, this one, the way that it's built, the way that it sounds, the way that it feels, um, and that, and then it included an extra plate. And when I use them, I enjoy both of them, but for some reason, I just enjoy this one just a tad more. It's just, it's well built. Now, not, that's not the same, neither, these two are both well built as well. And like I said, with the screw and stabilizers, this one does have kind of a one up on there, um, especially at the price. But I feel that, like they kind of cheapened out on the knob. Um, it's a little bit tiny, but I like to see it bigger. But that's just aesthetic kind of thing. Um, this is RGB, I don't know why on Key Monkey they say controllable white RGB. You know, it's, a, it's an RGB and you can set the colors for it. So um, all of these, you can set the colors and I believe the NJ80 or the IK75 allows per key RGB. I forget which one. Um, I'm just finding that a lot of keyboards that I didn't think had per key RGB do, but you have to go into what's called game mode on the lighting settings and then actually program the color. So uh, I will probably be doing a video about that uh, shortly um, and see which keyboard that applies to because one of the keyboards, well, I found out from a Redditor that posted that, hey, the CIY X77 does have it. I'm like, it does? And I have uh, quite a few X77s I plugged it in and I was like, mm -hmm. then I went to game mode and I was like, oh, wow. I can literally program per key RGB on this X77 and it's, it's a TKL, one of my favorites, and it usually goes for $40, even less sometimes when it's on sale. So anyway, I hope that that kind of answers the questions. Like I said, I can't tell you how to spend your money. I can tell you what the reasons I would and why I would spend my money on which board. Um, but yeah, out of all of these, this is probably the one that I, I would just skip. But that's just me personally. Like I said, I, it's it's built kind of funny. It feels like a toy. It doesn't really have, I mean, I could put a little bit of silicone in there and I could deepen it just a bit, but it's just, it's, uh, I don't know. I, 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 it's like a toy. I know, I mean, technically all of these could be considered toys for adults, but um, I, uh, this is probably the one, like I said, that I would skip out of the bunch. But the rest of these, they all have features that I think are worthwhile. Um, and like I said, this dock, yeah, I need to spend a little bit more time with it, maybe tune it, maybe my mind will be changed because those screw and stabilizers, that's a, that's a strong thing. But like I said, the IK75, I don't know why, it just, it clicks with me, it just works. So anyway, Hopefully this video helped answer any questions you might have about uh, these particular 75% with knob boards. I know that I've done more general 75% uh, videos and I'll, I'll be doing and you know, updating them as new models come out. But I wanted to answer the, the, this question because it's the one that has been coming up most often is which one out of all these should I get? Um, now, like I said, that needs to be a decision that you need to make, but I'm sharing the reasons why I would get them. Anyway, until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.